So traveling will test your fortitude on whether you get to a gym or don't get to a gym. Or whether you get enough time. Traveling with work that has nothing to do with lifting uh, makes it even more difficult. Since, uh, you know, especially like this week I'm in Paris, the cultural norm is to eat dinner very late and long. So, and the gyms here don't, well, you'll see the gym, but uh, there's not a lot of gyms and not a lot of uh, priority over weightlifting equipment. And the gyms here open when business is open, so getting a workout in before work is not an option. So you get, today's Sunday, let's see what I can do today. And uh, maybe tomorrow I'll get a third workout in a row. So um, stacking three workouts in a row, not optimal. But what are you gonna do? It's like, you gotta get something in. Gone away for over 10 days. You gotta get workouts in when you can get them in. Even if you're going back to back days, even if you're stacking within a workout. So, let's see if we'll find a gym that actually has Sunday hours. And, uh, Sunday hours and was in walking distance of my hotel. So, probably couldn't have been got much better than that because. Just because of the culture and where I'm at in in Paris, probably couldn't have gone much better than that. As far as the where I'm at and what I'm trying to do. So today, last night I did squats, or yesterday afternoon I did squats. This morning I'm gonna do bench press, and then I'm hoping to get a deadlift training in Monday or Tuesday. So. Kind of the idea. Probably gonna mix some stuff in the workouts. I've been doing some front squats and extra leg work since I'm not able to train as heavy right now with the hip. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm actually doing accessory leg work on non-leg days. So trying to make up for the lack of heavy squatting by doing other stuff. I don't know if I'm getting lost. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, more more to come later. Probably gonna have to do some more video today, and uh, hope to do a little little sightseeing. Maybe ride one of those buses or something. This my gym. Yeah, here we go. So musculation, musculation is so it's body care. Actually, not a bad little place. Their weights aren't good, their bars aren't good, but they're going the right direction. <laughs> so, I can't really complain. So, here we go. Starting the bench press. Uh, easy thing to travel with is mobility bands and lacrosse balls, things like that. Uh, my main travel things is as long as I'm not getting in the last weeks of the competition or peaking out, I go wrist wraps, uh, mobility balls, um, I weightlifting shoes, uh, knee sleeves. Um, if I'm light enough, I go no belt. This trip is no belt. I've been training without a belt anyway. Um, trying to improve my and work on my recovering my hip and uh, I figure if I stay light enough that I don't need a belt the hip should not get too beat up so um, it's all kilos this one this gym's easy as far as kilos goes because it's got the pounds and the kilos on it otherwise you'll have to do the math simple math 2.2 will get you close enough using your phone calculator if you need to and most folks are probably laughing because they know kilos so no biggie. Um, and the bars are always going to be 20 kilos in the European gyms. So uh, here we go. Let's do it. So we could be very spoiled. I'm very spoiled. 
I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but very spoiled. Um, commercial gym, and if you're lucky enough to find free weights, uh, the benches are um, kind of like this condition. Real, you almost never get a solid bench. Some funky thing at the end, like a home gym. Wonder how my spotter is gonna give me a lift off too. But guys, we're completely spoiled. They are. Um, that's why I laugh sometimes when powerlifters come in to meets as a meet director. I'm a meet director and a lifter and complain that um, in a USAPL event we're allowed to use anything that meets the specs of the IPF. It doesn't have to be an IPF bar. The Alico bar is over $1,100 US. That's pretty darn expensive to do at a local level event. Now, as I build up equipment, it's easier for me to have all that stuff at local events. Um, I still don't have my own Alika bar, uh, but I find it funny when the US lifters come in and lift on a Texas bar and somehow feel Texas power bar, which in my opinion is better than the Alika bar and it's uh, a fraction of the price and people complain that uh, you know we're, we're avoiding the rules, blah, 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 which we're not. It's within our rights as a USAPL event to run it by USAPL rules, not IPF rules. Uh, lifters be lucky, be very happy that that's the, we don't run every everything IPF spec. Otherwise, you would be buying only IPF approved singlets. I know there's been controversy out there that you have to have singlets now for USAPL events that are approved by the IPF. That is not true. If you're in an IPF and APF event, you have to have it. If you're in a straight USAPL event, as long as it meets the USAPL specs, you're fine. So. Hope that that is like spreading like wildfire that you can only wear certain singlets. Now, if you lift at the Arnold, sorry, if you're lifting at the Arnold, it's under IPF rules. Yeah. But for 80%, 90% of USAPL lifters, the IPF standards on weird equipment rules based on, uh, uh, you know, the fees they charge do not apply to you. Uh, the USAPL is trying to keep it to the point where you know, you are able to get in the sport without, you know, getting a second second loan. So keep that in mind, guys. If you hear a controversy that you have to wear this, you have to do this, blah, 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 blah. That's only per IPF and APF events. Otherwise, you can get a singlet at your sporting goods store, knee-high socks. Now, you got to meet the belt size criteria, but that's basics. All right, here we go. Traveling on a plane, you need to keep your protein up. Pretty much the most convenient route for me is protein bars. Do the Quest Nutrition bars. Um, get like 22 grams of protein in them. So helps with travel. Dealing with shakers and, and uh, protein powder on the road. Uh, especially in an international location, it's a little harder. Last thing you want to do is put a tub of protein in your carry-on in a like a 
Ziploc container or whatever and uh, have get stuck in some sort of customs hold because of it. So don't ever do that. Always, if you're gonna carry, if you're gonna decide to do carry on, make sure to do it uh, in its normal container. Otherwise, you'll still get inspected. But but I wouldn't even do bother with that. Just do protein bars for your airplane ride. And uh, yeah, getting strange looks here. So I'm gonna shut off the camera. Besides just lifting today. Sunday, I am being a sightseer here in Paris, and uh, that's the Louvre right there. One of these buses here, just checking it out, I'll give you a few video shots. I'm going to try to brought a bunch of snacks, and I'm being a pure tourist this afternoon. It's a Sunday in Paris, I didn't think much would be open, but... Uh, pretty good the river there's a river in Paris that goes all the way around it it's kind of strange it like circles the circles the city this is it right here and this is the outside of the Louvre all right Got back to the hotel room another key thing to international travel um, well especially with the US dollar international places um, it's hard to eat and eat correctly and eat enough um, today's Sunday most of the grocery stores in Paris are closed today so yesterday I went to the grocery store in the evening picked up waters, uh, some snacky stuff, grapes. I'm in Paris so I got some cheese, some bread. Um, some, just make sure you keep eating. Make sure you get go to the grocery store. It's also an experience to go check out an international grocery store. Uh, people look at you pretty, well, they look at me pretty uh, strangely. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, one thing I found out last night, well, this is starting to become a common in the U.S., is you have to bring your own grocery bags or they charge you for it. Lesson learned there. I have no idea what I paid. I'm sure it's pennies or whatever. Um, so bring the stash of food whenever you could find protein, hard-boiled eggs, grab them. I mean, if you can, if you're in a pinch and you don't have a protein bar, have an egg or both. And make sure, for me... If I don't have quite a bit of water, uh, it's a bad thing. I have to keep my hydration up. I'm also an old man, so I've got medicine and all sorts of things for my arthritis. <laughs> so, um, yeah, keep that in mind. I mean, even if you're having a miserable trip, if you can keep food in you, I always feel better. Even if uh, I'm working crazy hours, can't get to the gym, don't get to the gym at all. Like when I was in Mexico in August, eat. If you get through an international trip and don't get to the gym at all or very little, but you kept your body weight up by consuming enough protein and stuff, that would be a win. So keep that in mind when you're doing international trips. Always think about food. If you can't, you know, if you can't get to training, uh, the other priority should, the number one priority should be food. Number one food. Number one, training. <laughs> but uh, obviously number one is uh, taking care of business and uh, doing your job, taking care of your family. So got to take care of that and then eating, sleeping, and training uh, follow to that for me. So all right, hope that helps.
Bon là. Voilà, c'est parce que... Voilà, c'est parce que... 